Hi everyone, so today's video is going to be about being rooted and grounded in the gospel. So I thought this was a really important um, topic to talk about and um, I'm going to be getting into the real gospel but also um, what's going on in Christianity. Um, the confusion, the fear, anxiety, etc. So I don't want to make this intro um, too long, so um, let's just go ahead and get into the video. <clears throat> so I think it's really important for us as um, Christians to know um, the gospel. What is the real gospel? There are so many Gospels that are being taught, um, as I've mentioned in um, previous videos. <laughs> it's so important for us to know exactly what the Gospel is, um, because you have these false teachings um, coming in, and that we are not being um, tossed about by these winds of doctrines, I believe um, Paul referred to it in um, the Bible. Like um, when we when we are hearing all these different kind of teachings, um, our faith being swayed or our faith being shipwrecked um, because we are not grounded and rooted in um, the truth. So. Um, the first thing I want to go into is, um, what is the gospel, right? Um, I'm trying to find my Bible. I see a lot of people go to the um, verses in First Corinthians. Okay, so I see a lot of people go to chapter fifteen of First Corinthians. And it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in faith. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, third day according to the scriptures. Okay. So, Christ died, he was buried, and he was again, right? And it is by believing in Jesus, right, that we are saved, right? John 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. And we just read um, yesterday that um, the Father's will is all, oh, it seems going to believe in him. Right. Um, it is by grace, through faith in Christ alone, as I always say. Um, it is so important that understand that is what the gospel is. Um, that is no work of ourselves. Um, because when we are not rooted and grounded in knowing that, and knowing that is the truth, then what happens is these false gospels come in that tell you, you need to do all these things to be saved or to ensure you're saved. And like I said, um, these various winds of doctrine, it's like, we are tossed about by 
these false teachings, they take us to a place of confusion, they take us to a place of fear, they take us to a place of anxiety. And this is one of the first places that the enemy tries to work in Christianity. Because if he can try to um, interfere with what is our foundation as Christians, what is the center of our lives as Christians, um, ultimately Jesus, right? He is the solid rock. He is the rock we build our life upon. Um, and that our faith is um, grounded upon. Um, and I'm shaken. But this is one of the first places the enemy will try to um, interfere within Christianity as a whole as well, because it is spiritual. We see what's happening back in Bible times, even um, back with the Pharisees. But the reason that I believe that the enemy tries to um, go after this first when it comes to our faith is because then that our faith won't be built on the foundation of Christ. And so what he will try to do is he'll try to make sure people aren't saved, people aren't hearing the actual gospel, people aren't, people aren't actually believing and putting all their faith in Jesus, but he will try to get them to look at themselves, the life they're living, um, their works, something of themselves. Because then he can try to keep people from being saved at all. He can try to lead people into deception and confusion. Or if you haven't taught the real gospel, if you have put all your faith in Jesus, that he has saved you and he keeps you saved. Um, then, as I've mentioned before from the book of Ephesians, your salvation is sealed, it is secure. But he, if he can't try to keep you from being saved, right, because he's the enemy of our souls, um, if he can't keep you from being saved, right, you're already saved, then he'll try to lead you into confusion. He'll try to lead you into fear and anxiety through these false teachings. Um, this is why it's so, um, so important. And I talk about how, you know, Jesus is, um, the solid rock, um, and foundation, um, of our faith, but also of our lives too, because, um, Again, I, I talk about this in a lot of videos, but um, he is our glorious hope that we have um, in this life. Um, no matter what we go through in this life, this hope that can never be lost. And that is the eternal security we have and the rest and the peace we have through Jesus Christ and all that he has done on the cross. Um, so that is just what is happening in Christianity, um, what the enemy tries to do and, um, the enemy trying to keep people from being saved. I mean, this isn't just within Christianity. It's also just in the world we live in, right? Cause the Bible says Satan is the prince of the power of the air. So we not only see that in the world, like he wants to try to keep people from being saved um, and coming to the knowledge of the truth, but also within Christianity, he will do this through the promoting of false um, gospels. Um, so he will, um, these are the most common ones that I've heard. He will, um, And this is why it's like really deceiving because he will, um, false teachers will be taught these false gospels and then they will spread. And then that's what happens is they just, they spread until they're so widespread within, um, Christianity. And they seem right through man's eyes. They seem right to us as humans because all ultimately after all you know um we see it as humans like um p 
people should go to heaven based on the life that they live, based on their good works. But that's not, um, that's not God's ways. Um, <clears throat> his way is that, um, he loved this world. And so he sent his only son to die on the cross. Um, and offered the free gift of salvation because he didn't want to be separated from any of us. But that love is so hard for us to comprehend and that's one of the reasons why the enemy will go after this first. It's because if he can um, if he can get you to believe in a false gospel or if you've already been saved and he can get you into um, thinking um, from that place of confusion, not really knowing what the truth is, um, then what that does is we start living in this perpetual fear that we're going to um, lose our salvation, that um, Jesus is just going to take our salvation away. Um, and this is not the gospel at all. And what this really does is it distorts our view and perception of God and particularly his love, which I believe is like it. It's, it's, it's everything in our lives as Christians and our relationship with God is um, having a proper view of his love. But here's the thing, when we, um, when we believe in um, false gospels or the enemy has tried to lead us into confusion and deception through these teachings, right? When we're not grounded and rooted in the truth and what is the gospel um, and the security and the peace and rest that we have in Christ, then we because naturally how the how we're taught you know how the teaching goes and the verses that are twisted of scripture where we start seeing god as um this person that like i said um our salvation we're going to do something to lose our salvation and then we end up living in this kind of perpetual fear and anxiety of our salvation being lost never knowing that security that we have in Jesus. And then what happens is we are living from this religious place and we are um, trying to make sure we get everything right, trying to make sure we're, we're doing all these things. Um, and it seems right to us um, humans because ultimately these teachings, they, you could say in a sense, they inspire greater devotion for God, but it's ultimately coming from a place of fear and anxiety. And again, there's no, um, groundedness or or being rooted in the truth and this is when i start thinking about paul talks about um being rooted and grounded and in love and i think about that and i absolutely think about it in terms of um not only our love for other people but also in his love right <clears throat> And I share this because I, I lived like this for so long and I know how um, tormenting it is. And um, you want to make sure you're doing what is right for God. You want to make sure you're doing everything that you should be doing. Um, not only to have a good relationship with God, but also to make sure that you're going to go to heaven. Because again, these false gospels, these false teachings, they plant those seeds of fear and anxiety in your mind and doubt as well that um <clears throat> never allow you to have that certainty and that assurance of your eternal life um which ultimately points to jesus and points to his love for us he loved us first we wouldn't even be christians if it weren't for him so i want to get into this um I want to get into this way we learn to view um, God's love for us, right? So like I said, um, 
false teachers, they will use different scripture verses and they will twist them, um, which is why this goes so deep in Christianity and, and so widespread because there's literal scripture verses, Bible verses being used to um, justify these teachings um, and ultimately throw people into deeper confusion. I've said it in videos, but it's been a really huge verse for me. The Bible says God is not the author of confusion, but a peace as in all the churches of the saints. So if there's anything trying to lead you into confusion, um, any false gospels, you know, that's not from God, but, um, he is of peace. And as I've said before, um, the gospel is simple. It's known as the simple gospel. Um, it's not this puzzle, you know, of like, um, for me, like I always felt like I was just constantly trying to figure out like, what was the truth? Um, and like, am I doing everything right that I'm supposed to, um, the, by sorry the gospel is simple simple enough for like a child to um be able to believe it and receive eternal life by believing right putting all their faith in jesus um because god wants as many people to be saved as possible um he doesn't want anyone to perish, you know, the Bible talks about that. Um, so it's the enemy at work trying to complicate things, trying to confuse things, um, in very subtle ways. And we see that it says the enemy was more subtle than any beast of the field. <coughs> it's very, 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 very subtle. Um, for those that, um, have commented on, have commented on my videos, particularly any false gospels, I have shared, you know, um, I'm really not that different from you guys. Um, like I really, um, I understand where you're coming from. Um, I was, um, in that place in my life at one point where, um, you know, I thought that if I didn't do certain things, um, that I, uh, wouldn't stay saved or, um, and ultimately, like I said, I was living a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety. And if you are too, um, it is okay to admit that, you know, ultimately it's why I make these videos is to, um, dispel that fear and anxiety and really show where it comes from, because I know how tormenting it is. Um, so, um, but I'm not that different from you sharing these messages. Um, you know, but when my eyes have been opened to the deception and the confusion in Christianity and why I lived in so much fear and anxiety for so long, it really breaks my heart to see so many people in the body of Christ um, living in that similar way um, that I was. Like, it breaks my heart, especially um, understanding God's heart for us is that he loves us and he wants us to know that eternal security, that um, eternal hope that we have in him and only through him, he wants us to know that. Um, and um, that we, we have that security in this life, especially because so much of life is unknown and uncertain, you know, um, but at least we can, we can be certain about, um, where we are going to spend eternity and we're going to be in heaven with him and knowing that, um, that assurance of your, of our eternal life. So it's really important that we, we understand the gospel and that we, um, that is what our faith is grounded in and rooted in, um, because like I said, ultimately that is our foundation. So that when we hear false teachings or false gospels, um, our faith isn't being knocked around. We don't, um, get swayed around like, by these winds of, um, false doctrines. Um, I mean, but we're rooted and grounded in, in Jesus and 
um, the cross and um, the real gospel, and um, nothing can shake your faith. And in fact, um, for us even to not be in a place of confusion or fear, anxiety anymore, I used to not think that could ever be true. Like I lived truthfully um, with this continual fear that I was going to go to hell since I was, um, five years old, probably to like 23 years old or something. I mean, not many years. So for such a long time, I never had that assurance of eternal life. Um, and I lived that way and it was very hard and I was constantly in confusion until I, like I said, I had my eyes opened up to what is happening in Christianity and, um, God really helped me understand the gospel and how to get into that confusion and all that stuff. But, um, that's why I share, you know, these videos, um, because that was my life for so long, but I can say if I lived in that place for so long, then I believe, um, through us knowing the truth, through us knowing what is happening in Christianity, um, and why there's so much confusion and deception and um, where the fear and anxiety comes from. I believe that um, for anyone, it is possible for us to um, get out of that place of deception and really, really know that peace and rest that we have in Christ. So, um, so I just want to encourage anyone um, on this channel or anyone who comes across this video um, to really to understand what the what the gospel is, right, and how you are saved um, and kept saved, which is by Jesus Christ and all that he has done. And I just want to encourage you to just know that, to be um, grounded in that. Um, Because the next part I'm going to go into is um, looking at the gospel, right? What is the gospel or aspects of the gospel? We can't earn salvation. But to go from there as well, we can't even earn God's love for us. The Bible says God is love. It's who he is. He gives his love freely. and so. When it comes to being rooted and grounded in the gospel, any teaching that you have heard or any thought that even comes to your mind, because um, I know it can come in the form of thoughts, um, can be let go of. If it is trying to make you feel like you can earn salvation in some way or have to earn salvation in some way or even um, have to earn God's love in some way. If we see the gospel for what it really is, that Jesus died for our sins, he lived the perfect life we couldn't, that he is our only hope of salvation, that's by believing in him and putting all our faith in Jesus, nothing of ourselves, but putting all our faith in him, that he has saved us and keeps us saved that we begin to understand that we don't have to live in this continual fear in our lives. And for some people, I will say, like, some people, it bothers them on some level, but some people, it's a very intense fear throughout your life that is very strong and you feel like you have to live in that and you don't and in fact that's not even um the truth and i think it's really important to talk about that because i see the harm that it is causing to people mentally emotionally and of course spiritually in their lives um 
and how it affects your relationship with God, the relationship that you're actually supposed to have, that you really have with God, but the enemy wants to distort that, doesn't want you to know that. And so if we look at the gospel, right, that Jesus died for our sins because he loves us. And that means he saw every sin you would ever commit. He knew that every sin you would ever, um, you would ever commit. And nothing kept him from going to the cross. He didn't want any sin to separate you from him. And he died on the cross. He was nailed to the cross. As he bore all your sins and the sins of the world, so he could be with you forever. I mean, there is no greater love. <coughs> oh, excuse me. When Jesus has come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. So come unto me, all you that work, all looking to their works, all working. And I will give you rest. And this is the spiritual rest that we have through him. The rest we have in his perfect, finished, redemptive work of the cross. And all that Jesus has done. Where I say all our hope, all our freedom, all our rest is found. There is no rest found in yourself. If you were looking at your works to save you, um, if you were looking at yourself to save you, there's no rest found in that. Nothing is ever enough, right? And that's because the standard of the law is perfection. For us to go to heaven through our, our works and we've already fallen short. We've already broken the perfect standard it would require. This is also why Jesus says, you know, um, with man, it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. He's talking about um, um, a rich man being able to enter heaven. I believe the verse, he says, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for um, a rich man to enter heaven. And he says, um, and then someone says, you know, how then, you know? And he says, with man it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Period. By man, by human, for us to go to heaven, it is literally impossible. We've already broken the perfect standard required. Through God is the only way it's possible. And this is why Jesus came to live the perfect life that we couldn't. And he died on the cross for all our sins. And he says, whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. And it is the rest that we have through him, um, knowing we are saved when we put all our faith in Jesus. Trusting completely in him, no work of ourselves. This is the rest we have through him in knowing we are saved and that our salvation is sealed as we read about yesterday. That the Son of Man shall give unto us eternal life, and him whom hath God the Father sealed. That our salvation is sealed by the Holy Spirit, as it says in the book of Ephesians. And in this way, it's so important for that to be the foundation, the center that our lives are built upon as Christians. 
knowing that security, that eternal hope that we have through him. And then when we understand that Jesus holds us secure all the days of our life, every moment, that salvation can't be lost because he is the one who has saved us and, and he keeps us saved and he is eternally faithful, right? Jesus has no man shall pluck his sheep out of his hands and no man shall pluck his sheep out of his father's hand. But when we understand that truly, Jesus holds us secure all the days of our life, every breath, We don't have to live in fear of um, losing our salvation, kind of walking on eggshells. I don't know if anyone can relate, but in my relationship with God, I feel like I kind of used to walk on eggshells. We don't have to do that. In fact, fear is not from God. The Bible mentions, you know, um, fear not or don't be afraid. We even see Jesus say these words. Um, it actually mentions it in the Bible 365 times to be exact. That we don't have to live our lives in fear. And we're reminded fear is not from God. The Bible says he's not given us a spirit of fear. And the Bible says there is no fear in love. I love First John, it says there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear hath to do with torment. The one who fears has not been made perfect in love. Um, there is no fear in love, and the Bible says God is love. The perfect love casts out fear. Jesus' is perfect love casts it out fear. For fear has to do with torment. We don't have to fear torment. Jesus saves us. Jesus loves us. It even says that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. I love, um, Verse 20 of First John 3, it says, For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. But we know from um, the book of Romans 8 that it says, There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. And verse 15 says, For you not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. I'm going to go ahead and, like, real quick read kind of an excerpt kind of an excerpt that I typed out yesterday that I wanted to share. Um, it was kind of making me um, tear up a little bit. Um, but I just want to say this. Jesus loves you so much. He holds you forever as his son or daughter that he's redeemed. Jesus says, no man shall pluck his sheep out of his hands or his father's hands. 
your salvation is sealed when you put your faith in Jesus and you've been accepted in the beloved as it says in the book of Ephesians. Um, like I said, the gospel shows we can't earn salvation, but we also can't even earn God's love. Any teaching or thought that tries to make you feel you have to earn eternal life in some way or his love can be let go of because that is not the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, the narrow way because he is the only way. Eternal life is a free gift no matter what false teachers say or verses they twist. The Bible says God is love and there is no fear in love. And for John, Jesus bore out all of God's wrath as it says in Isaiah, the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Jesus' perfect love casts it out fear. We don't have to be afraid of his love. You are worth everything to him that he gave his life, bore all our sins and died on the cross. So he could be with you forever, not only on this earth, but also one day in heaven for eternity. Yes, that is the truth of how you are loved, how deeply and immeasurably you are loved by Jesus. You are his beloved son or daughter forever. And as I said, God's voice is not the voice of fear. He says, we are not in the Bible and mentions you don't have to be afraid, as I mentioned, 365 times and it reminds me he is with us everywhere we go and every moment of our lives his spirit dwells within us and his presence is eternal never ever will he leave you nor forsake you nothing in all of creation can separate us from the love of god his love is a love you can rest securely in he loved you so much he will never let go of you Jesus knew everything you would ever do, every sin you would ever commit, and nothing kept him from going to the cross. He didn't want any sin to separate you from him. He said it is finished. It is a finished work we rest in. The perfect redemptive work of the cross, where all our hope, freedom, and rest is found. I encourage you to read the story of the prodigal son and the book of Luke and the way the father, who is God, saw his son way off in the distance and he was running after him and immediately embraces him, wraps his arms around him, and kisses him. Notice it's not the father pointing out what the son was doing wrong. He wouldn't even have his son's, I'm sorry, and let him grovel. But it was the brother, the brother in Christ, the other Christian, pointing that out similar to churches and Christianity today. But that was not how the father saw him. The son had nothing else he could do but lean and look to his father's love, grace, and mercy. All he could do was receive his father's love and rest in his arms. God's love is the same for you. He loves you in that way. He's always waiting in his love for you, not to point out everything you do wrong or tear you down or scare you or hurt you in any way that you may have been hurt by Christians, but to love you. To love you as his child whose love is unconditional and never changes for you. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. That's a peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. So anything making you feel confusion is not God. As I mentioned, he is not the author of confusion, but a peace as one of the churches of the saints. What false teachers don't understand is his love, his amazing love is what changes our hearts as humans. And ultimately, that is what it's all about as Christians. Um, I want to just encourage you to take in his love for you. It might be hard, but that is the truth. You can just be loved by him. He wants to love you, and he's always loved you. And his love is what heals the fears of him that have been caused by these false gospels and other pain in our life. Um, you don't have to be afraid. He wants to love you. You don't have to focus on your sins. Again, what false teachers don't understand is when we focus on our sins, it actually serves up sin more in us because the laws of schoolmaster are meant to bring us to Christ. But there is rest in 
Jesus and his perfect finished redemptive work of the cross. There is rest in his love, grace, and mercy. You are loved, you are forgiven, you are redeemed. You are his joy, you are wanted and treasured by him. You are his precious child forever. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, um, yeah, all that stuff just started kind of coming up yesterday. Um, but, yes, I think it's really important that we understand, um, what is the gospel and that uh, your salvation is sealed, it is secure. Um, you are accepted because of all that Jesus has done. Because um, then we really start having a proper view of what God's love is. Um, yeah. Um, instead of living in that fear and that anxiety, you know, and we don't have to be afraid. And we don't have to be afraid to come to God. Um, and us being able to know that rest that we have in Jesus and live from that place of rest. But what I found the most amazing um, in my relationship with God um, that has just been really profound to me is that we can rest in his love. I always say his love is a love we can rest securely in. Um, and partially what I mean by that is, you know, right, because the Bible says there is no fear in love in First John. So if we have lived in fear, um, We've lived in fear of God, whether things we have been taught, whether things we have heard, whether these false gospels we have heard, um, or in fear of like making a mistake, doing something wrong, you know, um, when we have focused on sins, essentially. Um, it's this idea that, um, frankly, um, we don't have to live in that fear. Religion will try to make you feel like um, you have to have that fear and like something is going to happen, um, like we're going to go off the rails sinning or something if we don't have that fear. But what I found actually happens when we let go of that fear and frankly know that um, it's not even from God, that fear. Um, is that we actually are able to get closer to God. And here's the thing, we're as close as we could ever possibly be to God, because when we believe in Jesus, when we receive him, when we put all our faith in Jesus, slash believe the gospel, we receive the Holy Spirit. So his spirit dwells within us. So we're already as close as we could possibly be to God. But we feel like we're getting closer where we're really coming to understand God's love more and more. And those fears that we have learned of him are being further and further dispelled. So if we're not living in that fear, if we let go of that fear or just simply understand and come to understand that that fear that we feel when we're afraid to come to God, um, when we, um, we don't see him as the person that is always waiting in his love for us. Ultimately, that fear is not from God. Right? We, um, talked about how Jesus, you know, he says, fear not or don't be afraid. Um, and we see 365 times in the Bible mentioned. So... We can rest in his love for us. He's always waiting in his love for us. Um, and we see this based on the story of the prodigal son and many other examples. We 
don't have to be afraid of him. We don't have to be afraid to come to him. We don't have to be afraid of his love. We can know our salvation is secure in his hands. Um, the hands that are always holding on to us. Um, and the love that we can rest forever in. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I love you guys. Um, welcome to new subscribers. And uh, God bless you.